Good evening. We are back to the study of the Spirit's book. And uh, for those that have been with us for the last couple of weeks, we discussed Sleep and Dreams, which is book two, chapter eight. And um, we are going to continue on the subject with a little bit more uh, specifics. So before we go to question 413, which is uh, the start of the item, Spirit Visits of Living Individuals, just a reminder of what we, we study about dreams, um, sleep and dreams in the past couple of weeks. Uh, we mentioned that there are three, three types of dream that we have. Uh, the first type is the one that is very confusing, that we don't understand um, much of it, that nothing makes sense. It is our physical brain rehashing our daily activities, uh, you know, re re rearranging, readjusting itself. So it doesn't have any meanings and uh, we, we shouldn't take it uh, any, with any seriousness. The second type of dream is the one that where we stay close to our physical body, our, we leave our physical body with our spiritual body, our very spirit, but we stay close to it because of our material interests, because of our difficulty to move away from the uh, situations that uh, we have in our uh, daily lives. So these are dreams and experiences in the spiritual world that uh, are easier for us to remember because our physical brain is more involved in, the, in, the, in this type of dreams. So it has an easier uh, ability to recollect what we experienced. And the third uh, type of dream is the one that we go uh, to the spiritual world. We leave our physical body uh, dormant and uh, we have our experiences in the spiritual world with our uh, spiritual body. And these experiences are not registered in our physical brain, it's are registered in our peri-spirit. So when we come back and reconnect with our physical body, when we wake up, it will be much more difficult for us to remember, not impossible. We may remember pieces of it, but uh, it's much more difficult for us to remember. And again, our brain plays a part in it because when we remember parts of it, but not the full uh, aspects of it, our brain connects the dots and creates the missing pieces according to our own uh, ideas. So what, what, what I uh, said, well, if we remember these dreams in the spiritual world, we have to take it with a grain of salt. Again, we remember we dreamed with our grandmother in the spiritual world. Great. That's uh, very likely to be true. We remember specific details of what we did with our grandmother and what we saw. That may or not be may not be real because it may be that our brain is connecting the dots there. We shouldn't discard, but we should always analyze and reflect on what we have experienced. So the, the, we we talk, talked also about. Uh, um, premonitions in dreams that uh, it can happen, of course, but again, we shouldn't take it 100% uh, seriously because it may depend on various factors. So now we're moving into uh, some uh, interaction with other uh, living beings, living individuals, as they say here, during our sleep, during our dreams, okay? Philip, you can start for us. Please, thank you. Spirit Visits of Living Individuals, 413. The liberation of the soul during sleep seems to indicate that we simultaneously live two lives, that of the body, which gives us a life of outside relationships, and the invisible life of the soul, which gives us a life of hidden relationships. Is this true? During the liberation of the soul, the spirit life takes precedence over the physical life. But properly speaking, these are not two separate lives, but two phases of one life. A human being does not live a double life. Yeah, 
A um, couple of weeks ago, when we were discussing this, the third type of dream, the one that the spirit experiences in the spiritual world and doesn't uh, bring the recollections to the physical brain, uh, Louise mentioned that uh, it's only one brain, the physical and the spiritual brain. And uh, we were uh, agreeing, but, uh, but reminding that uh, this actually happens, the separation, uh, the experiences we have in the in the spiritual world may not be brought back to the physical brain. Uh, we may not uh, remember it. They are all, they're always stored in us, the eternal beings, the eternal spirits, but not everything is brought to the physical body. Now here, what the spirits are telling us is that uh, it's one life only, right? So when we separate from our physical body still connected through the, main uh, main chords um we are having an experience that does not belong to the physical body at that moment but it's not really a double life uh the spirit is is experiencing a life in the spiritual world without the physical body being a part of the experience uh but uh part of it will will be brought to it but it's not as kardec asks here if it's a uh, a true life a uh, true lives uh, the spirits are telling us no it's one spirit one life and uh, the spirit has a spiritual body and has a physical body but it is only one spirit okay luis anything you want to add to that <laughs> okay, you open your camera normally when you want to speak. Okay, any questions here? Comments? Okay, next. 414. Can two individuals who know each other visit one another in sleep? Yes, and many others who are not aware of their relationship when awake meet and talk. You may have friends in another country without even knowing it. Visiting friends, relatives, acquaintances, and anyone who can be of use to you in sleep is very common. And you yourselves carry out these visits almost every night. Okay. Uh, we know that uh, we dream with friends, with relatives, and we even sometimes we dream with uh, those that uh, we don't remember from this uh, present physical life. Uh, an example of an experience that you can have with a spirit in the spiritual world that you are not going to recognize when you wake up is your guardian angel, your protecting spirit, the one that each one of, each one of us has a, a spirit responsible for us that takes care of us during our incarnations that um, in spiritism is called protecting spirit but some other beliefs will call guardian angel and other names so of course our guardian angel was never incarnated at the same time as we are uh, in this incarnation because it takes care of us from the spiritual world but it's very common that uh, we will meet him or her in the spiritual world to have uh, reassurances to have uh, guidance and uh, if we remember meeting someone that we really don't know who, exactly who it is, we may have uh, met our, our spiritual guide. And of course, uh, uh, for us that we live uh, in, a, in a place where, is, where we are not originally from and we have family members in other places, it's very possible and likely that we are going to meet them during your sleep and have conversations and have discussions and uh, uh, and uh, you know sometimes we remember sometimes we do not um, it's interesting that we're discussing this I, I this week I a couple of nights ago I had a very clear dream with my father that discarnated seven years ago and I, I don't dream uh, with him very often but we are really we really spend time together I don't remember exactly how and what but it was clear uh, uh, an experience I had with him and it was, you know, I woke up very uh, happy that I had this opportunity. So we are meeting all the time. Of course, you are not going to the spiritual world and uh, 
and be amongst a bunch of strangers. That doesn't make sense. You have to be amongst some of, of those that uh, you know and then can help you in your experiences in the spiritual world. Okay, comments, questions? Yeah, Luis. Johnny, uh, three questions. Uh, first, are you favoring the expression liberation of the soul instead of emancipation of the soul in English? Um, no, I, I prefer emancipation of the soul, yes. I, did I say liberation? In, in 413, it, it said liberation, so I was curious. Uh, oh, second question. Oh, okay. Yeah, liberation of the soul. I, I, I prefer emancipation. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But but liberation is not wrong. No, just, just to know what which one to use. Uh, yeah. Second question. 414 is one of those places where the codification uh, seems to be sort of different from other books. Uh, the codification mentions that we you know, our soul liberates almost every night, while Emmanuel uh, has mentioned that it happens, you know, once in a while, not that often. So what is your view? Do we emancipate every night or sort of once in a while, or, or you know, not every night, but, you know, less often? According to, according to my understanding and what I, 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 I did some research for this class and these studies, yes, we, we have uh, dreams every night. And uh, I don't know if you remember the first one, I, uh, the first study I mentioned that science says that uh, we, our dreams are uh, 15, 25% or 30% of our sleep. I don't remember exactly the number. And I mentioned that the part that... Uh, science cannot, uh, cannot uh, prove is the part that we are not connected to our physical brain. So that's it, the experience is outside, uh, outside our, uh, the, the, the physical brain connection. Um, my understanding and even reading Emmanuel and Andrea Luis and looking for researching them is that every night we, we, when we are sleeping, we move away from our physical body. What I know is that sometimes we don't move far away. The majority of us have that type of dream that we stay close to our physical body uh, because of our material physical interests of the, this physical life. So the experiences are very um, earthbound in the sense, very uh, related to our physical lives. They are not true experiences in the spiritual world uh, enlightened this experience as, as we hear in the, as we read in the books of uh, Andrea Luis and, uh, um, you know, uh, but, but again, the, the codification, it gave, it gave us basic uh, information about dreams and sleep, right? Even if you go to the Spiritist Review that has some more information on it, it still doesn't go very far from what we have here. Um, Elmo, I don't know if you have something to add here. I, I know you 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 were you looked at some of the information also. Um, scientifically speaking, we we dream every night, right? Mm -hmm. Now the question is, when we dream, are we emancipating the soul? And I agree with you that the soul emancipates every time that we dream. Um, it all depends how far do we go. Thank you. You had I a third one or the third that? question. I, I was concentrating <laughs> in your answer and I forgot the third one. Sorry about that. All right, no problem. <laughs> okay. You are on mute, Philip. 415. What is the purpose of these nightly meetings since we do not remember them? The intuition of them generally remains with you while awake and is often the origin of ideas that occur to you in a seemingly spontaneous manner afterwards without your being able to account for them. In reality, you obtain them 
from the spirit contact in which you participated during sleep? Okay. I think that's a very good and obvious question, right? So if we have those meetings, what's the purpose if we don't remember? That's a very good question from Kardec, of course, to the spirits. And the spirits give, give us an answer that is very interesting that uh, when we have, let's say, we are, we are investigating a subject, let's say we are a scientist, we are investigating, um, you know, a, a subject in physics and uh, we are kind of stuck or we are uh, with dif difficulties of moving forward. We can meet with other physicians during our sleep, have discussions of what we are uh, studying and discuss with them. And then we come back and we don't remember, but the intuition that uh, comes after it, uh, something that uh, we may think, oh, I came to, I, I, I had a brilliant idea here after I had a good night's sleep, may come from a meeting we had in the spiritual world that we don't remember, that we are just bringing the recollection or the intuition of it, uh, which we receive either from a living, an incarnate spirit that we met during our sleep, or a discarnate spirit that we met in the spiritual world that is also part of the, the project that we are working and that has all the interest in helping and assisting us in this, uh, in this task. So, of course, uh, and above all, the, the eternal spirit remembers and uh, stores everything, right? So even if we don't remember in the physical world, uh, the, our eternal spirit will remember and we'll have the ability to access it when needed. Uh, remember, again, I'm going to mention for the, the third time because I think it's always important, the, the case of the lady in the book Between Heaven and Earth that lost her young son and during one night, she, she's taken by Andrea Luis and the mentor to visit her son that is in a spiritual colony recovering uh, and continuing to grow up. And she had a very pleasant experience with the son, sp spends a lovely time with the son, and then comes back. Uh, and Andrea Luis asks the mentor if she was going to remember the, 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 the experience she had with the son. And the mentor told him, no, she's just going to have a nice remembrance of a good experience with him, but not the details. Because if she remembers everything, it's going to cause her more harm than good because she won't be able to focus on the other kids and the importance of the physical life she has. She'll be, she will want to go back to, to meet her son again and forget about her duties as a mother so the only thing she will remember is the, the nice experience she had with her son without details. And that's, you know, you see how it's important for us to sometimes not remember everything, but, you know, the meeting with her son in the spiritual world, uh, her as eternal spirit will, will remember uh, we, when needed, when she goes back to the spiritual world, something like that, okay? I, I I like to make a comment. Sure, Paco, go ahead. Yeah, I don't know whether I heard that here or somewhere else, but I remember inspiration is like in spirit. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yes, inspiration, I, I, inspiration comes from in spirit. So that means that all these muses that we have in our inspiration, apparently they do come from the spirit world. <laughs> you, you know, I think I heard it from you if I remember correctly, but oh, I'm okay. not sure. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but makes sense, inspiration, and spirit, yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, I like it, yeah. I like it too, yeah, never forget that one. Okay. Okay, 416. Can incarnates trigger spirit visits to happen? Can they do this by saying to themselves right before falling asleep, tonight, I will meet this person and talk to them about this subject. This is what happens. The person falls asleep and his or her spirit awakens. 
the spirit of that person is often very far from following the plan that it decided upon while in the body because human life is of little interest to a spirit when it's free from matter. This only applies to those members of the human race who have already reached a certain degree of perfection. Others spend their spiritual life very differently. They give free reign to their passions or remain inactive. It may so happen that a spirit visits someone that their incarnated self suggests to visit before falling asleep, but this is not because it was willed to do so while awake. Okay, well, let's divide this in, in parts, right? Um, if you if you are thinking a lot and hard about someone before falling asleep and uh, you are wishing to meet someone uh, during your sleep, it, it may happen, it may not. Uh, it may happen if the other person also agrees or is available to meet with you but depends on two free wills, right? Yours and the other person. So you may want to meet someone that is not available to, to meet with you. You are not going to meet that person. Again, going back to the book Between Heaven and Earth, which is the book we're going to study after we fi finish Liberation, actually. Uh, still a long way to go, but we'll get there. Um, the beginning of the book is a prayer of a young girl, 14 years old, to her discarnated mother asking for the mother to help and assist her because she's struggling with a stepmother and with the problems with the family. And the mother is in no condition to even connect to the daughter because she is totally focused on obsessing the stepmother. That's what she's doing in the spiritual world. So the girl prays to her mother the, the prayer is di diverted to the protecting spirits that take care of her and a group of spirits go and, and go to assist her. And that, that's how the book starts. So she's willing to meet her mother. She's asking to meet her mother very strongly, praying to, but her mother is in no conditions of meeting her because the mother is obsessing the stepmother. So... That's an example of how it doesn't depend only on, on us. We may want to meet with someone during our sleep and the person may not be available for the, the wrong reasons like the mother here or because, you know, spirits are busy also in the spiritual world. Maybe they, have a, they are attending something more, more important than meeting with us. So they will be doing something else. But, uh, you know, all our... Our thoughts are matter, and we emit thoughts that if it, they enter into connection with the thoughts of those that uh, uh, vibrate at the same level as we do, and we make this connection, we may be able to meet with them very easily. Um, I think here, uh, Luis, it touches a little bit of what you asked, right? Uh, when the spirit says, say others spend their spirit, spiritual life very differently. They give free reign to their passions or remain inactive, which means that uh, they stay close to their physical body or they don't do anything much more, right? And they may, may meet someone, but uh, it's not because they wanted to do so, but it's just because of circumstances. doesn't really address exactly what you said, but a little bit about what uh, you said, right? Well, uh, 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 I don't want to confront you in any way, just so that we can share the same references. Uh, I, I knew I had had somewhere, so I was browsing here in the other computer, and it's in the, from the consoler, question 49, where Emmanuel says, most of the time, the dream is a reflex activity of the psychological situation of the person in the mechanism of the daily struggles when the organic forces sleep in indispensable rest. In certain circumstances, however, 
ba -da -da, the dream represents the relative freedom of the spirit imprisoned on earth. So uh, uh, I might be wrong, but I think that what Emmanuel is saying is that not all the time, actually, most often our dream is a reflex activity. Sometimes uh, we, uh, our souls, you know, get free. So I was just curious what was your interpretation. And I just sharing this because this way we both have the same references. I, I totally yeah, I, I think what Emmanuel is describing is, is the first type of dream, right? The dream that our physical body re rehashes uh, our activities yeah. and uh, it's very disorganized and nonsensical, the dream, and right? The thing, the, the thing is, Emmanuel says that this is the most uh, uh, frequent phenomena, while the codification tells us that no, every night we detach. Eh? Just curious what your thoughts were about it. Uh, I'm, uh, again, I think define the touch, right? So that's uh, <laughs> yeah. because when we are having that experience that uh, Emmanuel just described, are, aren't we detached from our physical body also? We may be, I think. I don't know. I. I, I, I think that we are detached, but we are very close to the physical body. We're not, you know, we're not leaving the, the, the sleeping, the room actually, but uh, we are not uh, fully integrated. Again, um, it's, we don't really have the, the, the clear uh, answers to that, but. And, um, I don't mind discussing this because this is how we learn and we evolve and we, uh, uh, see other people's yeah. will. So this is fantastic. But, Sorry. Uh, Sorry. I, you uh, know, by the way, remembering... man, uh, you see that I, I talk too much. That's that's why those things happen. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I, I remember reading uh, in the in um, in mechanism of mediumship um, that uh, that Andre Luis talks about dreams and he talks in a more uh, in a more uh, dis dis disconnected way, the spiritual body from the physical body um, during our most time of our sleep. But uh, I don't remember exactly where and what's the detail. Uh, so Annette is asking, wouldn't the distance in the dream state depend on one's spiritual evolution? Absolutely, Annette. Absolutely. Uh, the more evolved you are, the more peaceful you, you are with your life and your mental state, the more you'll be able to go the distance in our spirit, in your dreams and connect with the spiritual, the higher spirituality. Yes. Um, so that's why the, the spirits always recommend for us to, to pray before sleeping, to enter into a state of meditation, if possible, of elevating our thoughts, of uh, trying to, to connect with our higher inner self so we can have a, a, a more pleasant experience during our dream uh, in the spiritual world but uh, as we dis were discussing here the majority of us cannot do that do not, it's not that cannot do that do not do that if they all, we all can but uh, the majority of the population chooses not to do them that because of their concerns with the physical physical activities their preoccupations with the world the world and then uh, they end up staying uh, close to the physical body. Yeah. Yes, then, exactly. That, that's, uh, that's the training uh, of praying every night before sleep, giving thanks for the day. That's what uh, San Agustin told us, right? And he talks about it in the Spirit's book, uh, how every day after, uh, when, before we go to sleep, we should analyze our day, judge our actions, uh, see where we could do better and uh, elevate <laughs> our our thoughts. Yeah. Um, and Annette, yes. Uh, oh, sorry. Yes, Let's go ahead. I, I totally agree with you. Uh, uh, actually, in some classes, I actually teach people some, you know, things to do before or, or when going to sleep so that we can maybe have better dreams. But I, I love this subject because is one of those things in, in that even we are not, you know, uh, uh, I forgot the word in English, explicit mediums. It's not explicit. The ostensive, word. ostensive. 
ostensive mediums. Every time we go to sleep, we can do a little experiment. So we can experience things and incorporate those in our knowledge about the universe and life. So uh, I love this subject. Uh, dreaming, uh, each night we do a little experiment and I love it. Sorry, Annette. Danny, yes. Yeah, I like this question um, because it's, you know, as we try to train ourselves to pray every night before going to sleep and try to have a good experience also during the sleep. Uh, many years ago, I prayed for my brother. I have three brothers. And I, I could perceive that he was being surrounded by enemies or not so good company. And I prayed really like from my heart one night, asking him to be enlightened or helped. And in my dream, two of his enemies were so angry with me. They were strangling me and threatening to kill me and, and you know, to uh, follow me and, and to keep attacking me. And it was a nightmare basically, but it was very vivid. Like my prey did something and I could see it was not pleasant, but I could see the effect, like something happened that it triggered their anger. So uh, it's, it's interesting. Sometimes we might not remember what we dreamt of, like you were talking here, but in my case, since I remember almost everything, I actually did uh, experience that moment of threat. And when I woke up, I felt relieved because I was in my body again. But for sure, they were, I don't know, keeping track of me or I don't know. So they were not happy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I, I learned today a new word um, that uh, is the, on neuronautics. It's the ability of uh, of of influence our our dreams. A lucid dream is one where the dreamer is aware of the dreaming and may be able to exter exert some degree of control of the dream over the dream's character, narrative of environment. Um, that the hey, early yeah. references. Uh, yeah, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it correctly. Uh, it's written. I'm going to write on the chat here because I, you know, maybe the English speaking uh, people can help me here. That's the word. Philip, Annette, Carol, can you say the word? On aeronautics. Say it again. On aeronautics. On aeronautics. Okay. Yeah. That's a. Uh, that's I. I. That's a. It's called a lucid dream. And uh, when Dani was talking, I know she has all her dreams are she remembers. I don't know how much you you part you you are able to to influence what's happening with you in your dreams, Dani. If you if you are able to, uh, you know. To, to to recognize that you are dreaming and influence on it. I think I know some people can have, do that. I think at, at certain sometimes I can influence a little bit. Like in this case, I I woke up, I came back, and I felt my body coming back. And I woke up with my throat, like pain in my throat. But I, I could get away from them. I guess sometimes we just woke up from nightmares because we find a way to get out. But I think that specific dream, I was being threatened and attacked. And I was like, I'm out of here. And boom, came back. So, yeah. But it, again, how much is, not for this dream, but for other dreams, how much is the connecting dots or, you know, as you were saying, in the beginning of the class, 
did that really happen? Did they really influence the, the dream? So. Matt is asking about sleep paralysis, right? What happens with sleep paralysis? That uh, she works with a young lady who is, experiences sleep paralysis frequently. Um, you know, I, I have recently come across this question and I trying to remember what I know about it, but I don't remember and I'll, I'll get back to you on that. I don't know, Elmo, if you have, if you, re if you know anything about it. No, I think last week we, somebody questioned about that as well, and we didn't have an answer. I continue not to have an answer. I don't know much about sleep paralysis and I'm fear to try to guess over here. Oh, so that's what we discussed last week, right? Yes. Yeah. I, yeah. I usually, I usually, I usually have lucid dreams. You know that I have them often, in which I'm aware that I am dreaming. Okay. Come on. There you go. Come on. So you have what is called this strange word there on aeronautics. On aeronautics. <laughs> We'll there have to learn how to. We'll have to learn how to pronounce that. Oh, neuronetics. I don't even know. <laughs> we'll figure yeah, it out. This was. It was mentioned. Uh, you know that uh, that uh, Manla uh, event that is happening this weekend. Uh, right, that Jusara is giving a lecture on Saturday on spiritism. It's a. Uh, it's uh, by the Manla Institute, and it started today. And someone mentioned this on one of the lectures. I think it was, uh, what's his name? Um, Bob Thurman, I believe. That's his name. He's, he's kind of well known. Uh, this is uh, the, the Tibet House US Manla online event that is happening this weekend, started today. Sara is going to participate on Saturday, uh, presenting spiritism to them. It's going to be, it's a very, a good uh, presentation that she did it's really worth she pre-recorded it so um okay Sorry. so back yes oh, oh, go ahead. Sorry to, to to keep you know bothering but uh, I'd like your opinion on something this week uh, a few days ago uh, I was dreaming and then I thought I woke up I thought my wife beside me had woken up with me. Uh, he was, she was saying something, I moved my head and I saw this strong light in front of me. Very, very bright, very white. But I actually was not awakened and I woke afterwards. For me, this was a maybe. I, I felt like, you know, my spirit, uh, uh, Richard hers and, and something else. Do you think that applies? Definitely, I experienced that uh, you had uh, in the spiritual world. Uh, the light, probably uh, an enlightened spirit that was close to, to you and to, to her. She was part of it. But um, much more than that, is that dif difficult to, to, uh, to say? I, I don't really have much more to say there. Elmo, you have something to, to there? No. No, no, I don't. Uh, I'd like to make a comment what Luis brought, and I think it's a very good point, because there is definitely discrepancy. Uh, you have trouble hearing me, Luis? My, my volume is too low. I, I will increase the volume. OK. Because it's definitely for what you read in the consoler and what's presented here, there is a discrepancy of what spirit the, the spirit's books say and what um, Emmanuel is saying. And I think it's very good that we present those discrepancies and study that discrepancy to leave it clear here that Emmanuel is as elevated he is, is not perfect spirit yet. And you no, know, if I have to pick one of the two, I'll pick the spirit's book for, for one reason. It comes direct from the higher who spirits who get the codification of the of the doctrine, and it has to pass to the to the 
editorial, so to say, of Hayori spirits. That's one thing. But also, because here also in this book and in other books I've read that this emancipation, temporary emancipation of the spirit from the physical body is a necessity of the spirit. The spirit needs to go out there and get a little break from this materiality or this physicality, I'm sorry, not the materiality, but the physicality. So I'm more like, I'm leaning towards to stay with uh, what the spirit said in the spirit's book. On the issue of distance, uh, I have to assume that Annette is referring to going to higher spheres of existence, right? Because if you are at one point, you can go, go, go distance to the right and distance to the left. So you may be very unevolved and go to an opposite direction of, uh, of evolvement, okay? So I, I'm assuming here that, that when she said distance is going towards the more elevated planes of existence. Because we could go in a different direction as well. And to the point of, um, of Ms. Velasquez, I think it's, we have to remember that when we place ourselves in a position to be helpful, to assist others, we have to go where the assistance is needed. You know, so in some time we go to places that it's not so pleasant. If you know, the example that I always use, if you want to help drug addicts in a crack house, you're not gonna be received with flowers. You're not gonna be a very pleasant place. You know, but you put yourself in a position to help, that's where you're going to have to be. And sometimes we face those who don't want you there. And if they do have this reaction, it's likely because we're doing the right thing. Thanks, Elmo. And uh, what you mentioned there, Annette, that uh, you, you, there is a, some spirit school or soul school. Uh, and there Luis mentions a lot in his books that, uh, uh, there, yes, there are. There are congregations of spirits in the spiritual world where, you, where you, you attend classes. And these classes are attended by both discarnated spirits and some incarnated spirits in sleep state. They are taken there by their mentors or guardian angels to attend these classes that will be helpful for them. Um, maybe to this incarnation, sometimes not even to this incarnation. That's why you won't remember anything because it's important for your progress as an eternal spirit, but doesn't really apply to this incarnation at the moment. So we won't uh, remember because it's not really necessary. Or you will come back to later as an inspiration, as a guidance or something like that. Yes. Yes, we always have spirits protecting and guiding us. Uh, they are always available to us. We sometimes close ourselves to them and that's our problem. Uh, we always have the spirits trying to help and assist us. Um, our guardian angels, our familiar spirits, they are always available to help us if we open ourselves to them. The problem is that uh, we don't. We, we decide to focus on uh, mundane things and not in um, spiritual things, more elevated things. And then, you know, they're not going to force, impose anything. We have our free will, we make our choice. So if we choose to, we choose to go to a bar in the middle of the night instead of going to a spiritual school, it's our own choice, right? I have a question. Sure, Paco. Yeah. When I call the spirit and I attempt to communicate with the spirit, I I'm I'm inclined to, <laughs> I'm inclined to speak to the spirit, I guess, in English or Spanish because it's all the two languages that I know. But my question is why English and Spanish can it be something, a communication that is beyond language? Yes. So I'm communicating, but it is beyond language. 
a micro am yes. i making sense huh yes um okay, we, okay. our communication is done through thought but until exactly. we learn how to communicate through thought we have to communicate through words but the, the, let's yeah. say let's say uh, you go to sleep and you have that that this very dear friend of you from a previous incarnation that is actually incarnated now in china and speaks chinese and you speak english and you cannot understand each other you meet in the spiritual world you communicate through thought yes the universal language right exactly that's exactly that's my point that we tend to to think in sense of languages but we all have the ability don't we don't we have all the ability to kind of communicate in thought be in language we have we have the ability but not the knowledge Oh, that, we ha, we, okay we have the potential but not the capability yes. actualize got you yes yes not all of us right and the more we evolve the more we are able to communicate through thought but uh you know it's the it's the example that i always uh, give about you know wearing you wear glasses your whole life you wake up in the spiritual world uh after you die you die first thing you are going to look is for your eyeglasses right because you're not used to not use them do not have you are, them you are, i'm sorry but i don't have to go to the new, next world because even now i have 2020 and all my life <laughs> i still wear my glasses <laughs> <laughs> so oh my you know, god we, is that it's interesting yes you're right i i i, I kind of test to that you know <laughs> we we have to overcome the habits that uh you know accompanied us for many many years in the physical life when we wake up in the spiritual world after our discarnation we don't immediately uh, reacquire all the knowledge that we had in the from the spiritual world from our past uh experience there we need to readjust ourselves and the process of readjusting you have to communicate through speaking words because exactly, you don't know yeah, how but, to communicate but, you have to hear people talking because otherwise you wouldn't understand and uh, so on and so forth so it's the readaptation that takes takes a little bit of time okay, according so to, our, that... to our to our evolutionary uh, process right Thank you for the correction because I, I was totally mistaken. I thought that period you communicate in thought and not all of us are really with that ability as of yet. Got it. Yeah. Yeah, it's okay. the same thing as, uh, you know, the other thing that we talk a lot of, how do you move in the spiritual world, right? And and again, you move with the speed of thought. But if you read Nosolar, uh, Andrea Luis arrives there and he's uh, taking the... The, the bus there in Osolar the to move around the because the he subway. doesn't know how to move with the speed of thought. And then on the <laughs> second book of the collection, it took, takes two thirds of the book from him to go come from Osolar to Earth, uh, you know, to the city of Rio because he has to go slowly and, uh, and walk. <laughs> and then like after that. that, you know, he starts the book and he's already here immediately with a speed of thought so it's a process of learning and adapting to to the spiritual world right so you're implying that i'm looking i'm going to be looking for the subway <laughs> well you always said you are a perfect spirit paco so you won't be needing anything <laughs> put a joke through it yeah make it likely yes carol um, yes, probably this is very minor, but what about daydreaming or daydreams and also what we've come to know as a power nap? Do those have any relevance? Would they be more toward the physical body or the spirit? I, I uh, oh, would I appreciate can. any thought on that. A question. Um, yeah, actually last week we spoke a little bit about that, those moments in time when you are not awake but not yet fully asleep that you are already having, having experiences in the spiritual world, right? So uh, what, what you can have on a power nap is these experiences in the spiritual world. And again, um, the concept of time here and there is a little bit different, right? So you can have a full experience in the spiritual world in a very short period of time 
uh, our physical time here because that's what you need. Uh, again, that doesn't happen all the time and doesn't necessarily happen, but it may happen if it's uh, according to your necessity, right? So you may spend a whole lecture of a two hour lecture there and, uh, and it, uh, it passed five minutes here, and, you know, kind of uh, exaggerating a little bit, but it's possible, right? So um, the first question of uh, sleep and dreams is, uh, is that uh, our spirit wants to be free. We, the physical body is a prison and any opportunity that we have to escape from it, we'll take this opportunity and go back to the spiritual world. So any of the, your descriptions of a power nap or a quick daydreaming, they, they open our doors to the spiritual world and we will have these experiences in the spiritual world. Thank you. Very interesting. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Let's move on. Uh, read the la last two because then we have a, we leave the other for next week. Four seventeen. Can incarnate spirits get together and form assemblies while asleep? Definitely. The bonds of friendship, old or new, often bring together. <clears throat> spirits who are happy to enjoy each other's company. By the term old, one must understand the bonds of friendship forged in prior lives. Upon waking, we recall a sense of the ideas that we derive from the, these meetings, but we do not know the source. 418, if I believe that one of my friends had died and this were not true, could I meet my friend in a spirit, as a spirit, and discover that he or she is alive? Could I preserve the awareness of this fact when awake? As a spirit, you could definitely see your friend and learn the truth about his or her situation. If the belief in the death of that friend had not been imposed on you as an atonement, you might preserve an impression of your friend's existence, just as you may preserve that of his or her death. So um, the first question we briefly mentioned uh, regarding Annette's question, right? That uh, she said that uh, about the spiritual schools, the, 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 the opportunities that we have to, to, to re uh, meet with other spirits in the spiritual world and learn something and this applies not only to schools but you you know you let's say again um, I, I i came from brazil a long time ago but i still have a lot of friends in brazil and uh, i can meet with them uh, during my sleep and uh, we can have this uh, enjoy each other's company but also i can meet uh, uh, friends from past lives that are not incarnated at the moment or are incarnated uh, in places that uh, I, I'm not aware in this incarnation and we can meet and reunite and uh, share uh, good moments together. So sometimes we will wake up and uh, remember uh, something from our sleep but not exactly what happened. It may be these uh, experiences that we're having in groups or in a uh, together with friends, with, uh, in assemblies or things like that, right? Um, the, the question about uh, meeting and believing someone is dead and then meeting them on our, our dream and, um, and discover that he or she is alive. We have to remember this question was asked in 1857 when, uh, you know, if someone lived uh, uh, 500 miles from you, it will take one week for you to know that the person has, has died or not, right? Nowadays, we have the information almost immediately with our communications. So it applies much less to our days, uh, to day days, because the information comes to us much more, much faster, uh, except in uh, cases that uh, the person disappears and we don't know where they are in those uh, difficult cases. But... Um, but yes, we can definitely meet a friend and learn about their situation if they are dead or alive in our uh, sleep, 
like we meet our friends, we meet our family, and uh, we can uh, we can learn about their situation. There is a passage in the book in the domain of mediumship that a lady during her sleep uh, goes and visits her sister because her, her sister is about to discarnate. And then she says her goodbyes to the sister and then comes back and wakes up and thinks, oh, my sister just died. And then uh, she, later she receives the, the news that her sister has died. So she uses her sleep to her dream state to go and meet her sister and say, say her last goodbye. So definitely something that uh, can happen during our sleep also. Okay. Okay. So next week we, we are dis going to discuss transmission of thoughts. And uh, we mentioned a little bit about the thoughts in this uh, today, but we're going to go a little bit deeper in the, in the, transmission of thoughts for next week okay any any questions comments for, uh, regarding this week before we close finish no okay so this is how the weekend looks like um saturday we have a very interesting lecture um from, with Tanya Stevanin from the UK. Uh, it's a very good friend of ours that uh, we met when we were living there in the UK a good almost 30 years ago. She's going to talk about how can spiritism contribute to the treatment of mental health problems. And she's going to compare between the Brazilian and the European models of a spiritist center focusing on how uh, in Brazil, Spiritism has been making a more direct contribution to the treatment of mental health problems, uh, while in Europe, this, um, this hasn't been possible yet. So uh, if you are interested in the subject, uh, it's on Saturday, 11 a.m. Very, very good uh, subject. I, I know Tanya is very knowledgeable of this. Um, on our initiation into spiritism course that is every Sunday at 10 a.m. This Sunday, yours, yours truly, uh, will present Perispirit and Fluids. So if you want to see me presenting Perispirit and Fluids, it's this Sunday at 10 a.m. on the United States Spiritist Federation uh, YouTube channel, Facebook channel, uh, the International Spiritist Council YouTube channel. And then our meeting at 11 a.m. this Sunday is a Spiritism Q&A. So just bring your questions and uh, we will try to answer if we can. Okay, so it's this Sunday, 11 a.m. Uh, book club next, next Wednesday, uh, chapters three and four. We just start studying the book 2,000 years ago. So next Wednesday, 7 p.m. with uh, Daniela. Uh, chapters three and four, okay? And uh, what else do we have? I think that's that's it, right? Uh, our Spirit Center reopens on March 7, on a Monday, oh, right? Oh, wow, wow. Yes, we are going to start again the, the spiritual assistance <laughs> and spiritual treatment every Monday at 7, at 7 p.m., okay? For the time so, being, it will be only Mondays, but... Um, so we should go so for not passes this Monday, on Monday, the other Monday. Yes. So we should go for passes on Mondays. Yes. At what yes. time? Starts at seven. Start at seven. Okay. Monday seven. Okay. Seven. Yes. So this is not this Monday. Next Monday, March next 7. Next Monday. Okay. Yeah. Th March thank 7. Thank you. Okay. Oh yes. I'll <laughs> I'll, I'll send the address, uh, Annette, for you. Um, so Carol can you do our final prayer yes certainly thank you infinite creator and supreme intelligence we are grateful this evening to be together for the study of the spirit's book our chapter being the spirit spirit visits of the living individuals we are grateful for what we have learned and we realize that each time we sleep, we do move away from the physical body. 
intuition or recollection may occur when we awaken. Our spirit will remember. Our spirit wants to be free from this body. We are grateful to share in this knowledge and have a deeper understanding of the possibilities of when we dream. We are grateful to be together to share and to have the teachers explain in depth of these things. May we continue throughout the week to receive the blessings and the guidance of the spiritual benefactors. They are with us, helping us, inspiring us, and guiding us throughout the day, throughout the night, throughout the week. May we give thanks to their graciousness in helping us as we do our part. We are never alone. There is always a way to receive knowledge but we must also be vigilant and do what we can do along the way. We give thanks for what we have learned and may we continue throughout the week with our prayers, with our studies and with our mindfulness. May we receive the love, light and peace of Christ within us, carrying within our hearts and minds these blessings. And as we close now, may we continue with our prayers with our studies for those who are in need, those who may be suffering, those who need healing, those who need reassurance, especially through our love and our concern. We, as we close now, we close this meeting, we humbly ask for safety and protection as we go forth to family, friends, loved ones, and coworkers. May we remind ourselves as we go forward to be beacons of light Go forth now in peace and in gratitude, so be it.